afternoon everybody Trekflix here and welcome back to another video now in this video I'm got uh, for you guys I am going to be doing an unboxing and I also have some titles with some titles that I've bought in the last few days which I'm going to throw in just for good measure so we're just going to get straight into this guys so the first title I've got for you is an Amazon is an 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 Amazon purchase as you can tell by the box um, already been opened I just thought it would make it that little bit easier if um, I open them up so let's have a look and see what's in here so hey oh cool 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 I've been looking for I've been looking forward to this one this is the movie sliver with uh, Sharon Stone William Baldwin and Tom Berenger Um I really like this movie I know it I know it got a lot of um, mixed reviews and that when it uh, when it first came out and all that kind of thing but I really enjoyed it not for not for the obvious reasons um, I actually thought Tom Berenger and William Baldwin were really really good in this um, with the characters they portrayed it's been a has been a long time since I've seen it so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back into this um, at some at some point um, it basically follows the story of this um, of this woman played by Sharon Stone who moves into this flat um, and uh, and and the tenant as the as the uh, the tenant and the uh, the guy that rents it out I'm pretty sure it's, it's the guy William Baldwin here um, is the owner and. Um, and the form some ki some kind of relationship in this um, in this film, and Tom B B Berenger is basically um, is not is is kind of the antagonist in this. Um, it's a bit difficult to explain because it's got a couple of uh, twists and turns in it that I can't quite remember how they panned out. Cause it's been such a long time since I've seen it, um, but it's a really cool movie, guys. Um, obviously, like I said, it did get some mixed reviews, but I. Um, I really enjoyed it, so yeah, that's uh, Sliver. Uh, the next one I have, again, um, another Amazon buy. Um, and this is, yes, the one I've been looking forward to. I've had this pre-order for quite some time since I saw this at the cinemas. This is Black Panther with Chadwick Boseman, um, Michael B. Jordan, Martin Freeman, Angela Bassett and Forrest Whitaker and Andy Serkis. Um, love this. I absolutely love this movie. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, I think in, in in terms of all of the sequels that we've had in, in the Marvel Universe, such as the Iron Man's the Captain America's and... Um, uh, oh, dear. Yeah, just the sequels in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in general. I think this particular one doesn't need another one um, because obviously in Infinity in Infinity War, which I've already covered in my um, in my review of it, um, I think it's it's kind of a a nice little follow up. That was a nice follow up to this, so I don't think I don't honestly think they really need to do an awful lot more an awful lot more with this movie it's good just as a standalone I think um, I mean it wouldn't be too bad to see a new one coming a new one coming but really I think it does it does enough this movie does enough for um, for Black Panther uh, for us to see Black Panther in in more in more movies involving the Avengers um, it follows the um, I mean, everybody's seen. I mean, I know everybody's seen it now, but it follows the story of of Chadwick Boseman's character T'Challa, um, that um, that is the Black Panther basically, and he's out, and he's out, um, and he's and he's being opposed by uh, Michael B. Jordan's character. Uh, I can't remember what his name what his name is that um, that wants that wants the Wakandans to announce themselves as a technological as a technological civilization to the rest of the world for uh, for good reasons they are for really good reasons but the way he goes up the way that his the way that um, that Michael's character develops you kind of see that like his 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 um, you kind of see how nasty he can be and all that sort of thing and 
and out and back a, and uh, it's a really it is a really cool movie guys i really do recommend it if you haven't seen this one yet um so yeah that's uh black panther everybody so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna go into something that um that i came across um a couple of days ago on the internet um when i was just talking about the sequel when i was just talking about the sequels there to um uh, to all of the uh, to a vast majority of the um of the marvel movies like your your iron man's and your captain america's the thor movies and all that sort of thing um i know i, I in this article uh, that i saw it, 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 it was talk, it was basically talking about the uh, the worldwide cross of, of infinity war with it breaking the 2 billion mark um there was a little segment that I saw which actually made me kind of laugh. It was the fact that um, uh, apparently James Cameron has taken a bit of a spat against Marvel about the oversaturation of superhero movies that's actually within the industry. Um, I think really, to be fair, with all of the Avatar sequels that it's got planned, I don't know how many there is, I think it's something like maybe four or five, is it? Four or five sequels? What difference is that going to make against... Um, it's kind of a... It's kind of a contradiction against... Against what he's planning with these Avatar sequels. I mean, you know, just because one movie is, is the highest grossing movie ever doesn't mean to say that it's not going to be overtaken by another film you know i, I mean come on man sort, you, sort yourself sort yourself out james you know i mean you know there's no there's no need to be a, a spoilt little brat about this just that uh, you know just shrug it just really shrug it off and and just continue to make your brilliant movies you know i mean you've got Alien, you know, uh, Titanic, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and your first Avatar movie, which was all, which, which, in my opinion, was good, but you know, it was it was too overhyped, you know, it was it was overhyped. So that's going to be my little rant on this. So yeah, so now I also have some music for you guys as well. I'm not sure whether you'll be interested in this. If you're not, um, obviously you can move on to the next section of this, which should be in the next maybe five or ten minutes something like that uh, might not be that long but, but yeah again i've got another amazon buy from the yeah uh, from the amazon superstore this is from this this one is from music magpie and this is um oh yes yes volbeat um guitar gangsters and cadillac blood um now i've actually mentioned these guys in a previous video before um when i think i was i was doing i, I think it was the uh keswick to barrow video that i had up um which was probably one of my more pointless videos because i didn't really do an awful lot of recording out of the card if i remember correctly um but i did speak about these guys and um i've got i do have another one on its way but um, i probably won't include it in the next video that i do but this uh, i'm really looking forward to listening to i've not heard it i've not obviously i've not listened to it yet um I, I think i might have heard a couple of songs from from um uh, from my friend that that has them on pretty much all the time at work and that you know so a really cool guy loves his rock music and loves it so he's uh he's just been to see them recently and said they were absolutely fantastic um so yeah there's another band that i wouldn't mind that i wouldn't mind going to see as well so yeah that's um guitar gangsters and cadillac blood from volbeat um, and the next one I have is another is another band that I have that I've mentioned in another in a previous video that I've done yet again. Um, I, I, I gave a pretty good in depth just talk of, 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 about these guys, and I said that I was waiting for the new album to come out, and I actually I've actually had it for quite some time, but I haven't really. I haven't really looked into it because I wanted to save it until now to be able to do uh, to be able to uh, do this with you guys. So, just one second. It's, 
hope I've not damaged anything. Um, this is Lordy and the Sexorcism album. This is um, obviously, as you can see, this is a di this is um, a di this is a like a set of rip of stuff in this. Uh, I kind of know what I kind of know what's in this, but I haven't actually had a look in it as of yet. So let's uh, let's check this out. So let's be careful with this, because like I said, this is a, a, set, a set, so I want to try and be fairly careful with this. Uh, oh, there we go. What have we got in here? Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that is awesome. That is so cool. Right, um, we have got here, this is, I think there's quite a few more things in here, but there we have an embossed tin, pic, um, a tin picture. That is so cool. Um, okay, so if you can see this there, there is Mr. Lordy there, and from left and from left to right with all the others. On this side here we have um, Ox, we have, um, he, he, he's the bass guitarist, the uh, keyboardist Heller, um, Amen, the lead guitarist and drummer Mana. Uh, we don't know much about the true identities of these people, as um, as like I said in the in the previous video that I did. Uh, they they keep themselves very private, so we don't know who they are because they don't really want all of the publicity. They don't really want all of the uh, um, the publicity drawn to them as the regular as the regular people that they are before. Like when they're not when they're not actually dressed up, you know. But yeah, that is really really cool. Uh, so yeah, we've got we've got that. Let's have a another look and see what we've got in here. I can see the I can see the art I can see the album here. So let's get that out. I might pick up um, a separate a separate album at some point, and I'll keep this in its uh, in its sleeve as a collector's item. There's the uh, the album itself with some rather controversial artwork there I think yeah um, there's the there's the back of it there's the back of it there I did actually listen to the uh, listen to the album on YouTube um, after after I actually ordered this um, so yeah the, you know I, I, I've, I've bought it you know so legal. so I didn't want to be thinking that uh, so it's Look, see what this post, see what this poster is. Oh, cool. So, right, okay. So we've got a poster, another poster here with something on the back. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. Oh, how sweet is that? Okay, so I'll go. I'll, I'll go through this bit here. These are the individual logos for the uh, for the band, everybody. So, obviously, that's going to be Hella. Um, that one's ox, and you can see with the horns at the top there. That is Lord. That is Mr. Lordy himself. That would be this one here. Will be Mana and Amen here. Uh, I'm guessing because of the the chip of the of the thing resembling a guitar. And next we have. Looks like we've got some. Looks like we've got some postcards here, guys. Let me see. Oh shit! Oh, thought I thought I'd uh, broken that off there for a second. Another one here. What's that? Oh, I have a certificate of authenticity. You stay there. Certificate of authenticity. Um. AFM Records has, has issued this certificate to authenticate this copy of Lordy Sexorcism. Um, this exclusive fine edition includes a, limit, um, a limited digipack, stamped tin plate, 20 by 30 centimeter with band photo, exclusive Lordy Sexorcism patch, which I, I don't think I've got, which I don't think is out yet. Five single aut autograph cards and a behind the scenes photo collage. Oh yes, yes, that's um, that will be the, the photo collage. Will be, will be this here on the back. Um, 
writing, recording, paint, oh, painting, sculpting, moulding, casting our asses off. That's how this album was made. Lordy. That's really cool. That is really cool. Awesome. You can say that there. Right. Um, what else does this say? This edition is limited to 500 units worldwide with no with no real number of which one I have of which co of which number copy I've got here which I think is a which you know doesn't really matter so I've got a I've got one of these 500 anyway if you can say that guys so yeah that's that and we have here some signed and these from the looks of from the looks of these these have actually been signed by the by the band themselves so there we have mr lord mr lordy we have a hella right there ox Amen. I think that's a really cool photo of him. I think that's awesome. And man, right there, cool. And what are the what are those? The same as in here. Oh yeah, there. We go. Ah, what are those? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That is getting that is getting stitched onto my year suitcase for definite. So there's no reason why people don't know that there's, there's no reason there'll be no reason why people can't disambiguate what's theirs from what isn't right so that's uh that's the unbox that's the unboxing so now i'm going to go on to the uh, the movies that i bought from computer exchange um and the first one i've got i've taken all the labels off the rest of it i've not taken them off this one could cry out loud honestly what am i like Terrible. Uh, right, let's get this off. Now I did actually, this one I've got in my hand, I have actually watched already. I had to watch this the night that I got it because I was absolutely over the moon to see it. Um, I'm not sure why I, ha I, I haven't got this, I didn't have this in my position, in, this, in my possession already, sorry. Um, and that is Rick Moranis and um, St and Steve Martin in the Little Shop of Horrors. Now it has been absolute. It's been such a long time since I have seen these guys. What a lot of fun I had watching this. I thought this was. I thought it was great. It's such a long time since I've seen it. I've completely forgotten what it was like, and like I said, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I look. Um, I love my musicals, but I've not actually seen any. I've not actually really watched any musical adaptation music music like stage musical to movie adaptations um apart 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 from the apart from this one like i say um but, but yes i uh i had such a good i had such good fun with this film it follows it follows the story of rick moranis here who's like a worker at it follows the story of, of Rick Moranis on the cover here who plays who plays um, a shop assistant that comes across an alien that comes across a, an alien plant that has uh, appeared out of nowhere from a from a solar eclipse, and it um, it basically just basically grows and and it's got a the, it's got the taste for blood. It's kind of um, it well saying. I'm saying kind of. It's based on the idea from Day of the Triffids, uh, from the uh, I think it was from the late, the late from the late nineteen sixties or something like that. So it was adapted. It was like the idea was taken and turned into a stage musical. And uh, honestly, I love this film. I, I really do. It's so good. I'd love to see the musical when it come. Um, if they ever decide to bring it back, the stage musical when they decide to bring it back. Um, great great film it really is and uh, some great cap some great cameo performances from steve martin john candy and the bill murray as well bill murray's cameo in this is absolutely genius it really is 
Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen this, guys, I highly recommend this. It's so good. It really is. Directed by Frank Oz, of um, who who were who had a lot of involvement with Jim Henson's work with like the um, the Muppets and all that and all those movies that that the, like the Dark Crystal. Um, what else was the you know all of the, uh, more or less a, a lot of the uh, earlier movies involving the Muppets and that sort of thing. So yeah, that's that's the little shop of horror guys. The next the next one I've got was one I watched yesterday and I don't quite know whether or not this is this is one of those movies that needs to be in one of that needs to be in one of Chris Stuckman's um hilariosity videos and and that is the Giver. Uh this is the arrow this is the arrow arrow release of this and I don't even know what I want to say about this. I mean, it, it it's a, it's a bit of cheesy fun, but honestly, it's 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 terrible. The acting is it's not even mediocre. It's terrible, to be honest. Um, but I think it's it, it I think it's sort of because of the time it came out, it was. Well, yeah, 1991 it came out. For the time that it came out, it was sort of like the start of the, uh, of the, of the sort of like, like the low budget movies that came out, like Gunmen, and um, um, there was loads of, not entirely, not entirely like this, but like there was other films that came out around that sort of time, um, like it was uh, like. Um, Death Machine and uh, that's the star Brad Dourif and there was there was another one as well I can't remember but we also had Gunmen with Mario Van Peebles and um, uh, Christopher Lambert there was Severed Ties with I think the guy from Reanimator I think it was I can't on I can't honestly remember I, I probably am wrong about that but we'll have to just have to just have to say how that pans out but yeah um, it, it it I think this movie was probably one of the first to start that sort of that sort of generation of movies and uh, it was very different it's based on I was from a lot of uh, a lot of you guys that might already know this but it's ba it's based on the manga um comic series of the same name um, and it uh, and it follows the story of a reg of a regular guy that comes across um, an alien and a bat that comes across an alien biomechanical device that eventually turns him into this. Um, he gets attacked by he gets attacked by a group of guys, and and he he's already got this guy of a piece, and and it sort of like starts changing him into this into this into this being here that's got like super super superhuman alien abilities and that it sort of like enhances performance and that sort of thing but it, yeah um like i said it was it was okay it wasn't wasn't the best it's not the best film i've seen but it's something that you can it's something it's something that you can put on and just switch your brain off to you know it's Nothing fantastic, but you know it, it's one of those films. I don't know whether I want to keep it or not, because I'm not really one for. I'm not really one for keeping stuff that I, that I really don't like. But yeah, we'll have, just have to wait and see. I'll see what I'm like after a second viewing of it. It might be a bit different. So the next one I've got is a movie that actually came very highly recommended to me by quite a few pe by quite a few people that I know, um, and and I've. And at the time was quite envious of watching because I'm not really into car movies as such. It, it's not a subject that really interests me that much. But it's it stars Ryan Gosling who um, really impressed me in The Place Beyond the Pines with Bradley Cooper and um, Eva Mendes. And this film is Drive. Uh, now, I've not seen this. This, this is a blind buy, as I said. I've um, as I said, but it's come, it, it's come um, 
recommended by a lot of people that uh, that I know that said I should watch it. So if anybody, if, if any of you guys out there that's watching this video uh, have seen this, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. That'll be absolutely awesome. Uh, so yeah, that's that's drive everybody. The next one I have is another um, another blind buy. I've got three blind buys and one classic movie here. Then and the that that one is after the one I've just picked up now. So the next one I've got for you guys again another blind buy as, as I've just said Stan George Clooney, Matt Damon, Andy Garcia, Brad Pitt and Julia Roberts and that is the not the original but the remake of Ocean's Eleven now I've seen the original one from 1960 with the Rat Pack and I thought and I loved that movie I thought it was fantastic I really did um, but when it comes to remakes some of them are quite hit and miss which is why I've kind of avoided this because I don't know what it's like but a lot of people have told me that it's really really good and I should watch it and it's probably better than the original which I'm really envious about so yeah I'm going to check this out fairly soon and I might follow up with uh, I might follow up with a video on this on my thoughts of it so look out for that one so look out for that uh, uh, look out for a video on that guys I'll be uh, That'll be quite interesting. Maybe quite interesting to watch. Maybe. <laughs> uh, right. The next one I've got is the 30th anniversary edition of Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, directed by Terry Jones. Um, I love the Monty Python movies. Life of Brian, this one, and the other one, which I honestly can't really remember what it's called. Damn it. Yeah. Not much more to say about this other than if you have not seen this, you've got to. It, it's it's classic British comedy at its very, very best. I, I really, it is so funny. It really is. The Monty Python series you need to check out for as well. Um, I don't know where you'll be able to find it, but it'll be it'll be out there somewhere, guys. Um, for you, uh, for those who like your British comedy your British comedy that you haven't seen yet this is what you have to have you've got to have it, it you've got to watch it uh, the series is fantastic it's it's like um, a, a sketch comedy sketch show with all of your regular characters in it yeah <laughs> brilliant and uh, finally, I have the movie Steve Jobs with Michael Fassbender. Um, Danny Boyle film. Uh, not seeing this neither. This is a, this is another blind buy, everybody. Um, so I've heard I've heard good things about it, and I've also heard bad things about it. And it, it did get a few mixed reviews. A lot of people said Michael Fassbender was absolutely fantastic as Steve Jobs uh, so yeah I, I'm uh, looking forward to checking this one out guys so yeah it's got quite a good cast on this actually Kate Winslet, Seth Rogen and Jeff Daniels mm. screenwriter Aaron Sorkin right I'm definitely watching this I, like, I, I, re I really like Aaron Sorkin's work yeah oh cool so that just about covers it for this video guys thank you so much for tuning in um now i've been look i've been looking over in this little corner in and, and um i've been looking at them from about halfway through the video i've been i mentioned in in my buttermere video that i did my whole i'm talking buttermere that um i asked you guys oh dear sorry i asked you guys um if what which movie you wanted me to review out of Deadpool 2, Solo, Star Wars Story or Jurassic World. Now, um, I'm just going to go with the Jurassic World review because I've seen this twice now, as you can see there. Um, I might just go ahead, I might just go ahead and do that one because uh, I'm not really saying that, uh, I'm not saying I didn't really get any feedback so I'm doing it. I'm doing it just off the cuff, but yeah, I'm just gonna do one for Jurassic World because I've seen it because I've seen it a couple of times now and I kind of know what I want to go, what I want to say about it. So I'm just gonna go with that, guys. So yeah, um, 
so so again thanks a lot for tuning in this video if if you did like it make sure to hit that like button uh subscribe if you like and um, make a comment on any of the titles that i've spoken about in this video uh it would be very much appreciated and and uh i'll see you next time